And there we go. All right, so it's a little bit larger for you guys now. So on the right-hand side, I've got my layers, right? And I've got this vector smart object, and it's actually this entire middle piece here that I can keep as a vector file. Uh, and with that, I can double click on it and it's gonna open up over in Illustrator, which is really nice. And so I can make edits to it over here in Illustrator. So I could say, okay, this time it's gonna be featuring Wolf and Jomar. So uh, instead of one red mic, we're gonna have Wolf and Jomar on this live stream. Uh, so I can just make a quick edit to the text like that. Um, and then I can simply save it and exit and it's like a temporary file and it's going to refresh over here just like that you saw that kind of switch over uh so it refreshes here and i can just keep it in that illustrator file which is really nice so i can work in illustrator with assets here in photoshop so um guys i'm gonna probably re-edit this stream later to cut all that first stuff out so if you're just now joining the replay uh we're gonna be working on this thumbnail and stuff here so that's that's kind of uh that's kind of what we're doing in this stream love the way you make tutorials let's see if i can answer this question uh would you please tell me how i can show my portfolio to more people i have a behance portfolio uh how can i make it get, get more views you know let me know please thanks and Turtle Hugs just joined. Hey, what's up, Turtle Hugs? Welcome to the uh, live stream. So how do you get more views on your portfolio? Well, I think you've got to first be active, right? You can't just put it up there and expect people to find it and just keep adding new projects, especially on Behance. You got to think about, and this is the way I think about YouTube and, and creating YouTube channels. Uh, how do I find the people that are searching for my stuff. First off, yeah, you can promote and like create Instagram or you can promote your things on Twitter or have different social media profiles. However, I think that for the longevity of people finding your work, you need to figure out what people are looking for and try to maybe create some projects around that and then create some searchable content around that. Whether that is your own website with like a blog or with just posting projects and making sure that you're including a lot of searchable terms when you talk about those projects. Maybe you're posting little articles, maybe you're writing content on a, a site like Medium, or maybe you're creating YouTube videos ar around each of your art pieces and you just talk about them and then you title that YouTube video something about graphic design so people can find that over time and then they could go find your Behance. So they can go find your website portfolio or wherever your digital portfolio is. Maybe it's just like your Instagram feed. You got to have some sort of funnel where people are finding you over time and then they, they sort of funnel into your portfolio. That's kind of like how I see it or like if I were to approach it, uh, that's what I would do. Now, the other question is why? Like, why do you want more people to view your portfolio, right? Why do you want more people to view your portfolio? What What is your end goal? Because, you know, people viewing it, are you just, you know, interested in the fact that you're getting likes or you're interested in the fact that uh, you're just getting more views and you like that stat, right? You like seeing the numbers and the analytics and everything tick up and it feels good, right? Is that why you want more views or are you trying to get a job? Because if you're trying to get a job, maybe you need to attack that. Maybe it's fine that you're not getting views or a lot of people discovering your stuff over time because you're active in trying to find a job and you've got it set up on Behance or your website or wherever to where every time you're applying for a job, they're always asking for a portfolio and you're sending that to them as well. Like click on this link. Here's all my work. Here's what I can do. And then you're applying to a hundred or a thousand different places or you're emailing a hundred to a thousand different people to see it. Right. I think that that maybe is, is, you know, I think you got to attack why you want more views on it. What are you trying to get after? Right. If you're trying to build something to where just like more people are watching and liking and hearting and loving and all what whatever your stuff then then you got to create more of a searchable you got to put your content in more of a searchable place and think about those keywords and all that kind of stuff so that people can find it while they're searching for minimal designs or they're searching for cool logo designs or um, animated logos you know things like that and you're creating work where they can find that so that's that's sort of like just a little bit of what I think about that question. Do I do architectural stuff? No, there's a whole architectural school. And I tell you what, those 
those people that were in architect school at um at uh ball state where i went to man i never i barely ever saw them um so i didn't ever design or anything like that um mine was more graphic design schooling and then internship and then i went into graphic design now i'm a lot more multimedia i do a lot of video stuff too but um nothing architectural you know perspective drawings and all that kind of stuff no not me Well, I'd be adding glow to the text and red to make it more popping and flare. Uh, so we're talking about um, how do I how do I point to it? This guy, this guy right here, right? Uh, no, I don't think so. I'll show you what I got. So let's actually get into this. Um, Turtle hugs favorite video of mine was the bunny. I appreciate it. Hey, you should try the um, the cactus. Have you seen the cactus? Who in here has done the cactus? I really like that one. I get the bunny's adorable, and there's also a puppy. I think the bunny looks better than the puppy, but um, I'm getting a little bit better over time. I think we'll we'll have some like cute and cool creatures and stuff uh, over time as well for those flat design tutorials. But uh, Serene, hey, I appreciate it. Um, says higher tutorials help me a lot. So let's get into this. And the reason why I'm not adding more glow, I think let's look at what I do have. So one of my favorite things, right click and I can find that layer. I have a drop shadow on it just to pop it from the background a little bit. Um, the thing I think about here is contrast. So when you look, think about a glow, right? I have white text. So the best contrast for your eyes would be black and white, right? So white on top of black. So anything that's making this brighter out here is actually going to decrease the legibility of my white text. Uh, red would end up being sort of like a gray tone. Actually, let's just do that. I'm gonna put an adjustment layer over the top of this and it's gonna be a black and white adjustment. So check this out. You know, We've got color here and then we're gonna switch to black and white. So I'm thinking contrast. And when I think about how to make things stand out, it's all about that contrast. In some ways, yes, texture and elements and, and cool things like that can make it stand out because it draws your eye in. But for this, I wanna be a little bit more minimal. I don't wanna be just completely overwhelming with um, effects. And when I think about like, okay, how do I get people to read this? Well, if it's white text, then I need it to be a dark background. And so I want the background to be as dark as possible. If I add a glow to it, then it's gonna make it a little bit lighter, right? A little bit more gray tone. Now the red itself is a more of a grayish tone, but if you look at the separation here between the gray and the dark background, it's there's still a separation, right? And so when I, turn that back to color, I feel like I can read that pretty well. I, I don't mind um, that it's not like super glowy or has too many effects to it. I, I like that it's pretty basic. And what I like also, and what I think about is three elements. So, and there's not a lot of white space here. And part of the reason is because I know thumbnails are gonna be small. So if I even want that text to have a chance at standing out, I need it to be bigger. I don't quite as include it, quite as much white space, but sometimes white space can help legibility, but three elements. So I have a person on the left, person on the right, and then text in the middle. Now, what I'm going to do for this thumbnail, is simply switch out the two guys, right? And then uh, I'll pretty much leave the middle text as is. In the beginning of this video, you saw that we switched the bottom featured uh, people. So we're gonna be opening up a couple of uh, files that have photos in them to simply uh, switch out the people and we'll cut them out and we'll do some things. And there's some effects there, I think, but these are just characters from the game and we'll see how that goes. Just reading some comments over here. So, you know, uh, my friend's graphic uh, UX, UX designer, web developers. Do you want an assistant? Do I need an assistant creator at your channel right now? I'm not looking for any assistance or anything, kind of doing my own thing right now. And I'm not really able to have the resources to have an assistant or anything like that. Ah, Aaron says, got you. I'm from the esports background. See a lot of glow and flair to it. That's exactly right. And that's exactly why I kind of want to back off of that a little bit because I don't want... Like I want to stand out from the other thumbnails. So when you're looking down the list of thumbnails on YouTube, I want mine to feel like it's in the space, but also be different enough that that somebody's like, oh, that one's 
that one's different. You know, that one's something that doesn't look like the mess of thumbnails that maybe everyone else is doing. So I don't want to do the exact same thing. I do want to stand out in the space, but I definitely understand where you're coming from uh, with that general like esports look. Uh, I started Illustrator a few days ago. I'm a Photoshop master. My question is, should I start with the master? T uh, for I'm, I'm guessing like with master, a master class or something with Illustrator. Yeah, there's, I mean, I have a class. There's a link in the description of this video. Uh, so like I have a class that basically I made. If you are a beginner in Illustrator and you're just starting, these are the things I feel like you should know to get started with. And so I think we do like a little letter design. I show you how to like use shapes to create a letter. I would take that course and then like think about, you know, Skillshare is a great place. I think you can get like two weeks for free uh, of any premium course with a, another link in the description. Um, so like that's a referral, you support me and I help give you, you know, at least a couple of weeks of like free Skillshare premium. And there's great classes on there um, as well as mine. Mine's totally free, by the way, just sign up with an email. Um, so all the links to that are in the description. And then, yeah, I would say like find things you like to do. And there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube for all that stuff. This is a great question from Turtle. How old were you when you started designing? I didn't even know graphic design was a thing until I got to college. So I was 19 going on 20. I didn't switch into a graphic design major until I was at least 20. I am 30 now. So it's been about 10 years of the very first time I opened up any program like Photoshop or Illustrator. And that was when I was in college, guys. I, I, I was going to be a teacher is what I was going to do. I was going to be like like teaching kids classroom, like that kind of thing. And then I switched into graphic design because I had an interest there. And then I found out it was actually a career path and I didn't know that. So um, I was around 20 when I first opened things. I thought Illustrator was a drawing program. I had no idea what I was doing. I had no clue, no clue. And uh, I just went from there, just tried to learn as, as much as I could. I'm going to do a video on this, Ramesh. Uh, what do I think is the best free alternative to Illustrator? I'm pretty sure it's Inkscape, I-N-K-S-C-A-P-E. I'm pretty sure it's Inkscape, but I need to look into that and do a video on like the best free alternatives to all the Adobe programs. Yeah, I, I like that, Aaron. Um, sometimes, you know, when it's just a thumbnail and stuff, like I'm already taking too long probably to do this. Like you got to do it quick because I have a lot of different things to work on. I'm not just a designer. I actually go and I have to record all the videos. I have to edit them. Like I do everything for Pacers Gaming, but definitely adding more. And the thing is, you know, with Pacers Gaming, um, we actually have our own players that aren't the basketball players. So we have like esports pros, right? So once we get them and, you know, the pandemic back together, like where we can actually see each other in person, we'll take more photos and I'll put it in more, more stuff like that. Um, I actually do that on a lot of thumbnails. If you go to youtube.com slash Pacers game and you'll see our guys in thumbnails. But for this one, I, it's more about the characters in the game and actually the community's characters that they build, uh, everything like that. I must have drawn by hand at some point though. Yeah, as soon as I started into, so like I was never an art, I was like into sports, you guys. I'm very into sports, okay? I, I'm an, I was an athlete in high school. I never took art classes. I got to college and it had to be an art major to do this graphic design thing. So then I had to do a lot of drawing. I had to take drawing one, drawing two, um, you know, painting, sculpture, all the different arts. So I was a fine arts major. So that's when I had to start drawing by hand, learning all that kind of stuff. I'm not that great at it. I'm slow. Uh, I can do okay at it, but I, it just takes me time. I'm not just naturally good at it. Uh, but you don't have to be naturally good at drawing to be good at graphic design. Any advice on being a freelancer? I'm actually, Aaron, I'm going to point you to my last live video where I go into talking about my experience with freelance. It's not much, but I give as much advice as, as I can in that last video. So go check that out. Uh, this is a great one. Any other YouTube graphic artists that you look up to? Yeah, um, you know, it just depends on what you're talking about. If I look up to them as a graphic um designer or if I look up to them like as a YouTuber and what they're doing, especially when I started, I looked at it, like tried to find all the channels I could find. Um, I'm actually going to do a video on this too, uh, like top uh, YouTube graphic designers that you've never heard of or something like that, that 99% of you have never heard of. 
Um, one of them is Dom, I think, is D-O-M, which I haven't talked about, but he's doing some amazing flat design art, and I'm learning a lot from him right now, and I love it. I want to incorporate it into my own flat design. Uh, he's just a great illustrator, in, in my opinion. Um, there's a bunch. Hayden Abe, or Hayden Abe? Hayden Abe. Um, Jeremy Mira is doing some great stuff. Um, I mean, I could go on and on about the ones you guys probably know, like Dansky and I have met at Adobe Max once. We've talked a lot. We've done some collab things. Um, there's some other really great, you guys know the big ones. If you just look, if you just literally Google YouTube, like all those guys that are really great designers, I look up to all of them, honestly. Like I love the work that people do out there. MN, MHDP says, how are you? I'm, I'm good. How are you? Anant says design is everywhere. So uh, da, 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 da. let me read this. Let me try to understand what you're saying here. Like, ah, okay. Does it, so so he's saying design is everywhere. Does it ever bother me to like be out and see things? I do. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, I will be out there and just be like, oh man, there's two spaces here. There shouldn't be two spaces or like. Um, you know, like these fonts don't make, it, it does bother me at times. Yeah. When I see things that I, I don't care for. Aaron, you're totally fine. Hey, I appreciate you even just joining. Where's at? What's up? Long time. No, see, it has been a long time. It has been a long time since I've live streamed. All right, guys, let's get into this. Cause I actually need to do some work here over the next 10 minutes to try to, uh, finish up what I'm working on. So, let me just walk you through this. I see this and basically I can even just click and drag this over to um, my uh, document that I'm working on. I'm gonna slide this down into the space where I see my right hand side person and I'm gonna just uh, command or control T and transform this thing up. It's gonna get super pixelated, but that's okay. And we're just gonna kind of fit that in there and let Photoshop do the work. Uh, so something like that works. And then I can do something super simple like select subject. And it's going to do a pretty good job of selecting the subject. And then I can hit my mask button. And now we have it masked out. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab the smart filters from that and just drag them up here. And actually, that didn't work. So I need to create a uh, convert this layer to a smart object. And now I can grab these smart filters and drag them up and kind of see what they do to that design. Um, and once I do that, where did that go? So I can delete out this right hand side and then I can always tweak this if I need to. Um, but as is right now, I'm going to leave it and just get the left hand side going. So I've got this dude, he's got the pirate hat and everything. We're just going to drag this over here. Same thing, do the exact same process here, uh, and just scale him up till he's somewhere in here about the same size. So that maybe we'll just see how this looks uh these are just i mean i don't necessarily understand what all like these characters and stuff are within the game like what this hat means but like the people that would watch this video do understand um and i don't mean this live stream video i mean like the video that's going to be for this thumbnail I see that select subject kind of messed up the hat up here so I can come in and I could do a million different things. I'm going to use the lasso tool really quick and just draw along this line uh, to cut that out correctly. Once I do that, I can do the same thing. Just mask it, bring it down. I'm going to grab these same effects. I probably have to convert to a smart filter uh, and then drag this over. I just want to, I know there's more chat coming in. I'm not even going to look right now. I'm going to look here in a little bit. Um, but I appreciate you guys talking, chatting, everything like that. So basically, uh, you know, I, cause I just want to show you some design stuff, right? I don't want to just, uh, I actually need to do work. That was the whole point of coming on here. Uh, but I want to show you what I'm doing here. So these guys don't have near as much white space in between. So maybe I can tweak this and bring this down a little bit, uh, like that. And I wonder if I shouldn't, Let's try something really quick where I actually put a little bit of a mask. Oops, wrong way. Let's not reverse that mask. So a little bit of like a fade to the hat underneath this text. 
Um, and I think I'm going to actually brush that in, not use a gradient because that's messing with his shoulder at the bottom. So we're going to brush in a little bit of a, uh, we're going to hide some of this hat behind here just to make sure that text stands out, right? And once I get that a little bit that way, then I'm going to bring it back. So you can use the X shortcut key to swap. If you see my black and white swatches over here are swapping back and forth. White will bring back the hat and then uh, black will hide it on the mask. I think that works. That kind of gives you the sense that it's behind there. Um, and honestly, I think I'd probably practically leave this. Like I know it's rough. If we zoom in here, like look how rough these edges are and everything. And we could always, we could always tweak that and work with it. But uh, for a quick thumbnail, just to get the point across, this does pretty well. Now there's one thing I'm going to check on this camera raw filter. And I actually did it on my thumbnail that for this live stream. And that is uh, increasing the noise and the texture and the detail. So let's see, noise reduction is all the way up. Okay, so that I did do that already. So that's fine. So I just wanted to make sure it almost creates like a painterly effect. And when you have a super pixelated image, like a character or something, it helps get rid of some of the pixelation just by reducing that noise. And I crank it all the way to 100 uh, and then... I, I add in some uh, color noise reduction because without that, you get some more of that like artifacting. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys actually. It's kind of it's kind of easy to show. Can you guys see when I zoom in here this artifacting around these colors like spots? There's it's almost like that pixelated RGB look. When you turn up color noise reduction, it just gets rid of that. It's really nice. So if you have that, you can turn up color noise reduction in the camera raw filter. Uh, and then same with noise reduction. So if I turn that down, look at how just disgusting this looks. Uh, but if I turn it up, it helps smooth everything out. It's almost like a surface blur, if you will. Um, it just kind of helps, uh, I guess just, just helps make it seem not as pixelated. I'm going to drop down this, this title just a little bit. And with that, we can just tweak this mask. Uh, I double clicked on accident. So now we can tweak this mask and bring a little bit more back, wrong way, bring a little more back in there, like so. Cool. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this. Um, I, that was quick. So I hope you guys, I hope you guys uh, followed what I was up to there. I just wanted to walk you through actually uh, what I was working on. Now, I'm going to switch over to this and check out the chat. Guys, give me just one second. I'm just going to close that door a little bit. All right, so let's look at the chat, and then we'll finish, we'll finish this video up. So that was most of what I wanted to cover. I'm probably going to trim out the beginning portion because uh, I took a phone call and stuff in the middle of it. Um, so let's see, where, 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 how far back are we? Where can I find motion graphic design ideas and what's the best tool for motion graphics? Uh, there's multiple tools. One of the best tools is um, After Effects. I like After Effects for, for motion graphics. Um, and that's one of the main ones that people use, I would say. So, I, you know, I would say After Effects. Worsia, I'm doing great today. I appreciate it. Arshdeep says, hi, I just started learning illustrating your tutorials helped a lot. Uh, thank you. Um, I appreciate you guys stopping through everyone. <laughs> Nav says illustrator over Photoshop. I know there's a lot of illustrator people uh, on this channel. I think we'll end it there. I appreciate everyone. I just need to get this thumbnail done for game, uh, Pacers Gaming today. And I'll try to go live more often and show you some of the work I'm doing and answer any questions you guys have. Hope you have a great day. Stay safe. And I'll see you guys next time.